Well, welcome to Burn Sea Fishing. If you've got this far, please consider subscribing and uh, yeah, ring that bell if you do subscribe. But if you don't, thank you for the V. I'm back out fishing again and uh, yeah, probably lots to say, lots of things to talk about, but I don't know if I am. Um, but there you go. Don't really know what to say to be honest. I'm in one of them one of them moods to be honest. I am pleased I'm here. It's really nice. There's some chaps down there fishing who have just rocked up and they yip yapping away to each other. They're having a right laugh. So uh yeah. So yeah, I'm at the same place again. I still don't know where it is. It's at the River Humber and over there's Hull and uh as you can probably guess by all the lights. I've got me uh, Vaselli rods, I've got two Spin Fisher 7500 long cast reels. Um, not that we're doing any long cast today, but I will tell you about that. And I've got two pulley panels out and me good old free up flapper. So yeah, that's where we're at. I've got my Bivy, me Bigaloo, which I got of Alan. Go check out Alan's castaways. It'll be good for him. He's a new channel starting out. Go check him out. Yeah, as you see, I'm not really with it, am I? You can see that I aren't firing on all cylinders, to be honest. But that's just the way it is. It'll get better. I'm pleased I'm here. I, I was humming an hour and about coming for other reasons, which I'll tell you later on. Um, but yeah, so we're here. Looking forward to it, the tide is coming in. It is just down at the rocks. I should be casting out now. I should have baited up, but I haven't. I fired this camera up and started talking to you. So what I'll do is, I should get baited up, bring it back and cast out and we'll start fishing and we'll start this video and see how it goes. It's nothing's planned with my videos. It's just whatever spills out of my mouth as I'm talking. So yeah. If you saw my last video, you saw that I caught three codlin in one session. For me, that is unbelievable. Really chuffed about that. Uh, they were three good fish. All went back. None eaten on this bank, I'll tell you. Um, but if I hook one and it dies, or it's not doing very well, it will come on for my dinner, because nothing gets wasted. You know, it's not good to waste. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit when I've baited these up and hopefully I'll be firing on all cylinders. The other thing is, this video is now after Christmas, so I hope you all had a good Christmas. I hope Santa brought you what you wanted, and uh, yeah, don't get cold in your houses, chaps, just because it's a uh, high price on stuff. Enjoy Christmas. Um, I hope you have a good one, and uh, it'll soon be New Year, so you'll be able to get drunk again, so, See you in a bit. I'm really not firing on all cylinders today. It's one of them sessions. I hope it's uh, it'll be all right. I need to get out now because this water is down there. Um, I can't even work my torch. Things just didn't go all right, but there you go. Me head itch. It's not cold enough for a hat and I've got hat on. Anyhow, I'm gonna get baited up, bring you back when I cast out. See you later. I don't know what you can see there, I haven't rigged all the lights up yet, I've only got one up. But yeah, we're on the River Humber. Um, I still don't know what this place is, I've got the postcode. But um, yeah. It's a nice spot. Always hear the dogs though, they're always barking. But yeah, so I'm in me big loop. And uh, yeah, I quite like it actually. I'm chuffed I got it now. Um, it would be hard to carry it along on a beach summertime. Probably best just to get wet if it rained. But on venues that I can take this, um, I will take it and use it because it is ideal. It is, it's brilliant to be honest and uh, getting a bit of moisture on the inside but I presume it's because it's warmer in air, cold outside and get a bit of moisture, don't you? But I've got a coat, I've got my lights, I've got a flask, I've got my flask, 
coffee in. I nearly didn't, but I've left my water in the van, so. Lit my hand warmers, so everything's rose. I'm really chuffed to be here, and again, managed to get this spot again. So uh, everyone seems to go that way. I presume it catches better, but I might be being here on my own, to be honest. Today's session, what is it? Well, I'm feeling a bit under pressure, really. I'm working in a house at the minute, and you got to get it done as quick as you can. My landlord, the landlord, my gaffer, who I, he's the only person I work for, really, apart from a couple of others. He um, never puts any pressure on me, um, occasionally. <laughs> like they're moving in in two weeks and you think, oh Jesus, and you just, but it, it'll knock them back and things often go wrong anyhow, so they get moved back, so. But yeah, I've got this house to do and I was there all week, Monday to Friday. I was there yesterday with Karen. Karen helped me paint the outhouse, which is a long corridor and two two rooms which she helped me she helped paint she was painting that while I was doing the hall stairs and landing radiators door frames and everything else so we were there all day people came to pick up rubbish that was in the house that we put on Facebook for free but yeah I got a lot of so for me I knew I know I need to get this house done as quick as I can because obviously it's coming up to Christmas and the landlord um, he wants to rent it out, doesn't he? He wants to get his month's money out of it so that everything's rosy, but... Yeah, I've got that on. So I either take a day off. I'll either work the weekend, so I'll work Saturday and Sunday, and then I'll take a day off during the week to go fishing when it suits me for the tides and the weather. But it was good weather today, and I said to Karen that I could not, that be the wife, I said I cannot work tomorrow I've, I'm absolutely knackered and that's probably what's a bit matter with me today um, but if I come fishing today which is the day off then I can work five days next week solidly on the house so that's my thinking um, and then go fishing hopefully next Saturday if it's good weather but then as the week goes on, if it looks like the weekend's going to be shite, or even bad weather, sorry, um, then I'll take a day off during the week, and then I'll work Saturday and Sunday to make up for it. So I always, if I take a day off during the week, for me, I have to work two days to make up for it. <laughs> How weird is that? Only in Vernon's mind, eh? Water's coming into the shore. Um, there's a few rocks in front. I don't want to cast out and get hooked up on them So I let the water get in. I want to be getting a bucket. The squid that I brought is a small pack All my squid I weighed out in 350 gram bags That one's got 250 on so it must have been the last bag and I've brought it without any other squid So what a moron I am so full squids going out there if I do that, I'll probably have seven casts and I'll be out of bait. So I'm going to have to make them last by cutting in half and putting on my prawns. So I will be using the prawns all up tonight, which is good. Um, so main baits tonight will be prawn and squid or squid and cart, prawn and cart, whatever. Brought some worms as well. They aren't brilliant. Just can't get any decent worms. I'm still using the worms that I bought year, two years ago. Um, and they've empty in the freezer off them, so hopefully I can find somewhere to get some decent stuff. But yeah, we're fishing here, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, it might be a bit somber to start. I ain't in no foul mood or anything. Um, I ain't even got a rant, to be honest. It's just, life is just rubbish at the minute, isn't it, really? With, when, if you watch the news, that is, Governments don't seem to govern, do they? They get told what to do by markets, by other forums or global forums or globalists. They seem to do what they're told. They like certainly like wearing the same shirts, don't they? So, uh, yeah, there's nothing exciting about that, really, is there? But Christmas is coming up. By the time you watch this, Christmas is over. <laughs> How about that, eh? The date today is... 
the 27th of November. It is now 5.31. High tide tonight is 8 p.m. Um, that's over there. So it's about the same time here. So we catch codlin. That's what we're here for, isn't it? Well, I don't particularly want to pretend not to say what we're come for because there's, uh, that's a load of rubbish, isn't it? So yeah, we're here for codlin. Now then, I have caught codlin for the last four videos. Admittedly, it's only been single ones until the last video, which was last week before Christmas, and I caught three huge codlin. Huge to me, anyhow. So yeah, all the codlin I've caught this year have been good size. They've all been over 40 centimetres. So I'm chuffed with that. I haven't had a little babby one. But they've all been good. I had 46, 45 and a half, and 42 in the last video. So let's hope we catch another one. I mean, it, to be honest, if I catch one cod, I might pack up and go home. <laughs> Short video for Tom. But yeah, no, it's, I'm pleased to be here. I'm, I'm glad I'm here. I, did, I wanted to come as well, but I got sat watching a black and white film on talking pictures and I got comfy and it got to quarter past three and I thought, Christ, I need to be going because I should have left at half two, really. Because I wanted to set up in the daylight, get some pictures, but that didn't happen. So, I'll tell you what's the matter me in, in a bit. It's nothing major. It's just another niggle, another thing that's got to be sorted. Just rubbish in it. This country, they see her having a right laugh over there, them two, aren't they? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's the, you know, if we could go back to the 70s and 80s, I'd be happy as Larry. I'd be really happy. I'd be able to sort a few things out as well and upset someone. But that's, an, that's another story for another time. But. Yeah, I wish it was 1780s because that's the world that I knew then. Well, the world is changing now, isn't it? Electric vehicles, prices going up, garages robbing you because they could drop the fuel prices, but they aren't because they don't need to, do they? Because they can, people still have to buy it. Nobody complains in this country anymore because we've had 10 or 11 years of people being woke and saying new man, 90s man and all this trying to change people's attitudes and some of it's probably for the good some of it ain't nobody, I remember in 2008-10 people were cooing up, striking over fill prices and they are only £1.32 look at it now and it's just going to go up I mean by the time 2030 gets there and it's electric vehicles, I wouldn't be surprised if we're paying over five pounds for a litre of diesel. Because they don't want you on the road. They don't want you on the road with a, with a diesel engine. They want you in an electric van or they want you catching the bus or having no life. And you might think it's a bit, oh, Vern's going on, whatever, but it just seems as though there's too much going on with people, you know, Old Boris, old Boris Johnson's dad, he put his foot in it, didn't he? You can go and watch that, it's all on YouTube, isn't it? They're gonna divvy it all up. You got someone else who's a bit like the bloke out of Spectre. He's divvying stuff up and they'll do this and those will do that and it's the world new order. That's shite. All I want to do is live throughout the rest of my life, go into the pub, earning just enough money I ain't like other people who want to be hugely rich I just want to earn just enough so I can have me eating on and have a pint take the wife out go fishing because this has become my hobby you know this is what I enjoy I've done many things in times used to do up cars fix cars up spray cars scooter got a Lambretta did that all up and you move on and move on and then I just thought to myself I've had enough of uh, doing vehicles up and motorbikes and scooters and stuff 
it's time just to go out and just spend some time doing something you enjoy and uh, fishing has become that you know you ain't gonna see a video in air of me and the bigaloo all night it's just that I'm here just pontificating wishing it was 1970 or 80 um, 80s and uh, how life was so simple back then weren't it there was no speed cameras there was no camera vans trying to get you on every corner you go round and you and you're not even speeding you might not be doing a mile an hour over something else to worry about in it there was none of that you just just go out go to the pub go to the nightclub meet the wife you know it's all good fun wasn't it and now what is it going to become what is the world going to become like that's what i say you can only think, can't you, and start getting a bit wound up about it, but then you just have to stop thinking about it. Because there's too many rich, powerful people out there already got the plans to put in place for it to happen. And pillocks running our country, allowing it to happen. Can you get a doctor's appointment? No. If you do get a doctor's appointment and you're in that sort of the part of the country where you can, well done. I'm pleased for you. But not in this part of the country. Not at my surgery, anyhow. Crock of rubbish it is. Anyhow, that's life with Vern at the minute. That's Vern's take on life. And what I'll do is, because them rods still aren't casted out, you know. I've baited the free flapper up. The water must be in by now. And I'm sat here talking to you, making a video. You see, I'm putting the effort in. It might not be a video that some people want, because there I am in a big loo, um, talking to a camera. Whereas you want to see cod bass and you name it coming out don't you but that's not my video my video is whatever happens and you see it admittedly later but you do see it as i it happens to me it's no party tricks and uh i'm feeling a little bit chilly around my neck and i think i've left my neck warmer in the van which ain't good but if I'm feeling chilly it must be real so yeah Burns rarely here fishing on the bank but yeah now I hope you had a good Christmas um, Boxing Day hope Aunt Santa or your mum and dad or your wife got you what you wanted um, Santa Claus and he gets presents for the little ones so, uh, yeah, I hope Santa got you what you wanted. And, uh, yeah, next thing will be the new year. Another quiet night in. I used to go fishing on New Year's Day. That used to be my thing. But prior to that, when I used to play golf a lot, I was all, New Year's Day, I was always there. Daybreak, as soon as the sun was coming up, I was there ready, teeing off of the first tee. And uh, get a game of golf in for the new year. And then I started doing it fishing, but I didn't, didn't do it last year. Missed it. Oh dear, that horse is... Uh, no. Anyhow, that's enough of this. This has gone on too long. It's going to be a bit hit and miss, isn't it? And, uh, well, yeah, see you in a bit. This is the first bit of fishing tonight. <laughs> Sorry for it, it's a bit dragged out, but it's just the way it is. I film videos for YouTube if you're new to this channel because I like to have a chat to the camera because it just clears my mind yeah some people do other stuff drink go to this club that club whatever I go fishing just to uh, be on the riverbank and think think things through and just concentrate on fishing and normally it sorts stuff out so if you don't fish and you've just clicked on this Borrow some rods off someone, don't matter what it is, and just go fishing and see if you like it. It clears your head.
Well, that's the first cast out. That's the three up flat, but it's got squid on it. Two strips of squid and a squid head. Um, yeah, I've started using squid heads because I caught cod on one last week. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Need to see if I've got my neck warmer. What I'll do is, my bait should have defrosted by now. I'm going to put a prawn on this rod. It's going to be on a pulley panel rig. Um, I think it's got two O Sakuma Manta hooks on. I'm not sponsored by them. They're just hooks that I bought because they were cheap. I think they were £2.50 for a packet. Might have been less, actually. I thought I was quite lucky, so I got them. Right, well, that's the first one out. We're fishing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check my bait. If it's right, I'll get a bait made up, get it on, chuck out the next rod. If it's not ready, I'm going to sit down and have a coffee because it's all about fishing, and fishing includes sitting down and relaxing. So there, I'll be back in a bit. There we go. There we go. That's both rods out at long last. So um, I'm going to be able to get some water in a bit because the water's coming into the um, into the shore yeah so the water's coming into the shore so um what a lovely stilly afternoon well the time is 17:52. high tide is at eight it is the 27th of november um first of december on first of december on thursday i believe so uh it's not long before christmas christmas now is it don't give me long to do that house either. Oh dear. So yeah, I'm just grabbing sessions when as and when I can. Today will help me out with the house, but um, it'll be nice when um, the house is done and I can just go fishing when I like again. But I've got some other jobs to do as well once the house is done, so I'll just pencil them in rather than sitting on my backside doing nothing. Got that shah to do as well, ain't I? So uh, before Andrew Jones puts it in the comments, yes, I've got the shah to do, and it's still not done. But I've got the metal ready to put into the wall, ready to push the shah tray in. So I've just got to do it. It just means coming on from the house and carry on working when you get um. And at 54, all you want to do is go on the sofa. So I'll get the light set up, ready for um, lighting my rod tips up because I have a light. I don't bother with rod tip light tip lights because I don't like them. Um, I used to use tip lights all the time back when I used to fish 20 odd years ago. And the lines were always getting caught round them and yanking the lights off. Because I never fitted them on really tight. So with the line caught round it, it ripped them off. But you used to get line, line marks around your rod tip as well. And, uh, it's, you know, it's not good. It's not good. They potentially can break your rod, I believe. And from what I've seen with how I used to cast 20 odd years ago, if you can't cast properly, if you're doing a normal chuck out, it'll probably be all right. But if you're pendulum and you get it wrong, you know, you can get a gathering of a line and it'll go around, pick up that tip light and it'll either pull the tip light off or it'll snap the tip of your rod off. Because some people bond the tip lights frame uh, mounts on the rods um, others just clip on so yeah I've got a torch which lights up my rods I can sit in there or on my box and I can see them might not show up a lot on the camera but I do turn the light up when I turn the camera on so uh, if I remember anyhow that's both rods out I shall decide what I'm going to do for next bait get that baited up I've got a pulley panel sat there waiting just what a fish really because I haven't blanked since August since my trip to the Lake District I all three sessions there I blanked since then since I come home and fished my local 
marks again I've not blanked it's been really good I'm uh, I'm pleased anyhow it's enough of my yapping I've done too much yapping already but that's just the way it is Norfolk lads rabble on and uh, I'll see you in a bit just had a big knock on that rod That's all, hence I'm slurping. Right, let's reel this in and check it out. Might not be anything on it, but we'll see. That's the blank sword. <laughs> Look at that, it's a good sized flounder. Well, first fish, first cast as well. Not a bad flounder. Is that what? 28, something like that. Let's have a quick measure. It is. Thirty centimetres. So brilliant. One flounder. Thirty centimetres. Let's get that put back. That's recording. There you go. First fish. Of the session. In between Christmas on the 27th of November. There you go, let's get that put back. Right, someone's pulled a load of mono off the line and just left it all on them rocks. Now, if some birds go around there looking for bait that they can smell and see, could get the feet tangled up in that line. So anybody that fishes in these places, if you don't pick your wrappers up and your sweet papers and your crisp packets, which there's none of that round there. If you don't pick that up anyhow, even though there's none of that round there, all biscuit wrappers, at least pick your line up because the line it'll get wrapped around some creatures legs and then they'll lose the leg and it's not good is it all you got to do is pull it off snap off whatever pull it up sort it out tighten a knot chuck it in your box anyhow that's that 
one flounder, 30 centimetre flounder, chopped the bits, that's the blank out of the way, so the catching videos carry on, don't they? I must be getting quite good at catching. What we need now is a cod. What did I catch that flounder on? I caught it on a pulley panel rig with a full king prawn on it. That'll be going out again because it's not even damaged, so I'll chuck it out now. They had a crack and bite, really good bite. Um, you tend to get one good bite with a flounder and then you might get some little taps, but sometimes you get nothing. So if you see a big bite like that, if it isn't a mattress, then you need to make sure you reel it in. Check it out, because there'll be a fish on it. Brilliant. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off, I'm going to finish my coffee, get that rig baited up ready, hopefully we won't have any more knocks. Right, well, last week I was fishing, um, in the last video I was fishing with um, Duke. I had Duke, my daughter's dog, with me. And uh, I had me rod rests, rods, and me beach shell with my right hand, and I was pulling me trailer, my barra, with my left. And the only place I could put the dog lead in was my right hand. Well, we walked all the way down the path, all right, and I kept checking him just to make sure he went zooming off. As soon as we got going down the slope, um, he knew where he was going, to the gate, and then it's to the van. Now, Duke loves the van. He absolutely loves it. And as soon as he sees that van, even if I'm driving past and he's with Chelsea, he'll be dragging Chelsea along the road, my wife along the road. And what happened was he started dragging me down that slope, which was on mud. And I don't know if you can see this, but my boot is muddy. I fell on my back. And my arm still got mud all over. And I just went, my legs went from under me. I landed on my back, my head torch flew off. And I was just lying there in agony. When he saw I was down, he come running over to me and started licking me, thinking I was playing or something. So it weren't, he was looking after me, but he did nearly kill me. <laughs> and then, can't remember your name, well, it might be Gary or something, but of another fisherman who was fishing there, but over the other side, shouted me, and uh, I replied, and he come over, and he helped me with my um, trolley. So I had the dog in the left hand then, and my rods. But the next day, so thank you very much, I think it's Gary, I might be wrong, it's in Facebook comments he commented to me, and I can't find it. To get his name so I'm very sorry but if you're watching this you'll know you are thank you very much for helping me up and um, taking my trolley for me because as soon as I got closer to the van Duke was yanking me and with my hip it really does hurt because that dog's got no control he sees something he likes and he's off but there what can you do he's only young I mind you could have been trained a bit better but 
but yeah he had me over my legs went underneath me I went boof and uh, yeah I've been working that hard on the house I haven't had a chance to clean my coat or my boots so it's just the way it is and yeah I'm gonna reel this right hand rod in we haven't checked it yet I'm now gonna check it Someone's had a go at that, ain't it? Look, them two rigs tangled up. I might change that rig and get a different one. Still fishing. Still fishing. Not very good. Might have to look at that. The top two snoods are tangled up to anything. I did see some, I did see the rod tap. I did see the rod move, have a bite on it, but perhaps someone's bit it and it's all tangled up and it didn't hook them. Good cast for that. So yeah, Duke had me over. <laughs> I was just lying there for about a minute and a half, two minutes, and um, I think it was Gary, but the chap that helped me, he was with his dad there, and uh, he shouted, are you all right? And I think I said something like, I don't think so. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you very much for coming and helping me up. And Duke, that's either the slack got took up on my line then, but the rod moved. Anyhow, Duke, he got into the van. He'd been there all all afternoon into the evening, and all he did was he got on my seat in the van, where which he loves, curled up in a ball, and went to sleep. And he was asleep all the way home. <laughs> I do enjoy having him with me, fishing with him. He's uh, he's a right character, and he likes a fuss, and he keeps you company. But God, he moans and whinges because he's not walking. He's state, but I still give him loads of line. He had five meters um, last time, but when I've been on the beach, I've given him something like ten meters. I've had ten, twelve meters on a long line. Trouble is, in the beach, if you screw them spikes in a beach now. I think if he went, he'll just pull that straight out of the sand. It won't, it won't grip. I think I can only fish with Duke if I've got someone else with me. So, yeah, fishing on my own. It's a good job I enjoy it. Wonder if that was a fish that just took that then? Because I was talking to you, I weren't watching the rod. Right, I'm going to watch these rods. I'll be back in a bit. That was the story of the mud um, and Duke pulling me over down a muddy slope and uh, the next day I was working and by God I was stiff as arseholes absolutely stiff as arseholes I was it was a slow day's work that day see you in a bit right it's been a while so I'm gonna reel this in this is the prawn one which I caught on and sent back out We'll reel it and, get, and uh, put the next rig on, which is a two-hook flapper. But not a lot's happened to it, apart from the rods come back on itself. So we'll see.
bloody battery just died so I've just had to change the battery started reeling this in left it tight so hopefully I haven't lost anything that's on it to put a new battery in the GoPro <sighs> when I reeled it in the second time it weren't heavy Yeah, that was where am I? Yeah, that was really heavy when I first started reeling that in, and then the battery went on the camera. I knew it was turning yellow, which is low, but I thought it still had twenty percent. But that's gone off. Anyhow, I've uh, I've uh, just checked my hand warmers. One of them don't feel hot. So um, yeah, reeled that in. That was the prawn. It looks quite mangled. So uh, what we'll do is rip that off I've got another bait made up which is squid prawn and lugworm we'll give that a whirl I'll bait it up now and then what I'll do is I'll make another bait up ready for the next rig when that comes in I've casted the two at flapper to the left so that um, hopefully we're searching it out I was going to cast it straight down this to my left here because it's a huge mud bank there which shows through the day and you don't know if the fish goes that go in there, do you, to uh, check it out? But I didn't. I went more of an acute angle. So I've uh, gone over that way. It's very slow. The first time I fished here, I had no interest in my rods um, for the whole session until I think it was the third cast from the end. I then pulled in a flounder and a codlin. So I caught on the ebb. Um, in the last video, which you've just before Christmas, which you've just seen, I've um, I caught on the ebb, on the flood. Sorry, I caught on the flood. Um, I might have caught one on the turn of the tide, but then I caught nothing. And today I've caught a flounder first cast on the uh, on the flood again. So I've been here three times and as of yet i don't really know whether it catches on the flood the ebb seems to catch all the time but it's hit and miss when i'm from the last session where i caught the free codlin and fell over with duke i never even cleaned my rods i took my rods out of the bag on that night when i got home because the bags were saturated um i took the rods out of the bag and left them in the garage so they dried but I never washed them in fresh water because I just hadn't had time. I've been too busy. Um, this morning, before coming here, I was charging all my batteries up because I hadn't even pulled my GoPro out. So I was charging lights up, um, torches up, all sorts. Just too busy. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll be back in a bit. Hopefully we'll have some action on these rods. Um, need some action, don't we? And uh, yeah, I'm feeling a bit better now talking to the camera and doing a bit of fishing it's very tranquil here it's flat calm um, it's a big tide today it's the biggest tide I've ever fished here it's over seven meters quite a bit of water in front of me today all the other tides have been under seven meters so is that a reason why it's a bit slow I don't know 
but then that first time I come out it was below seven meters in the first video here and uh, it was like I say I, I caught on the la virtually on the last cast but there's no blank I've caught a flounder it's all good the catching goes on it is real I didn't bring the flounder from Iceland it is out of the River Humber I'll see you in a bit Right, we'll check this right hand rod out. It's been absolutely static since that first flounder. It's not looking like a good night, but anything can happen. There's still lots of time for the tide. The tide it time is, well, it's high tide now. It's 20 past eight. So we're at slack water. So uh, I'm gonna reel that in because it's just gone bang, bang. But nothing else has happened. So I've got another rig ready. We'll get it on, get a fresh bait out there. I'll cast it to the right probably. There's summer on there. One codling. <laughs> We caught a codlin. That's brilliant. That's now five weeks on the trot. I've got to get it unhooked. I've got stacked loads of weed that's blocked my rod tips up, and I've got big rod tips. And uh, I had to just put the rod in the rest, as you saw, and pull it up because I didn't want it coming off. But it's got the hook in it. It'll uh, hopefully come out, and we'll get it back. It's not a big one. Still a codlin. Thirty-seven centimeters. There we go. One cod, thirty-seven centimeters. Bloody brilliant. Right. Right. So here we go. One cod length. 37 centimetres. I think I might put him in the bucket just to let him have a breather and then go return him. But yeah, 37 centimetres. Great to catch. Let's get that back now. Right. Right. 
one flounder and one cod. So uh, to 37 centimeters, quite happy with that. He's gone back, he's not a floater. He's hopefully swimming out to the middle channel to eat lots of prawn out there, shrimp, and uh, get bigger for another day. And hopefully someone else will catch him and not take him home and eat him. Um, but yeah, they're there to be caught and taken home to eat. But I can't help thinking that they should put some sort of um, catch restrictions on like they do bass because this year for codlin it's been fantastic there's loads about um other years it's hard work and uh, you can't help but think that sometimes with the boom years the they should should put some sort of restriction in like bass so that the stocks get bigger because wouldn't it be nice to catch cod like we're doing now every year because it would be just be fantastic but it needs to be from the government you know we've brexited and they've not even pushed forward to make us a more profitable and uh oh what am i thinking got to be careful because you're into politics aren't you but what they've done is we've brexited and they haven't actually pushed the fishing industry or anything else and what they should do is that these fish that sizes that people catch they're there for the boats to catch I mean who wants a dab at 19 centimeters or whatever it is 20 centimeters you want dabs like this don't you so that you can that that's what they should be like the fish stocks should be bigger there should be more of them and then it'd be more enjoyable and not only that there'd be more people sea fishing and then there'd be more tackle shops that are in business selling more gear because people would be interested in it because there's more to catch. It's a win-win scenario. All they've got to do is up the sizes, put some restrictions in and get the fish stocks higher, but then do it to the boats as well. There, that's enough of that. It's only common sense in my opinion. Everybody's entitled to take a fish. Um, I've took a couple because they died. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't take one that's breathing and good to go back but that's my me that's my opinion um all right i'll get this weed off this rod i don't know if you can see it but the weeds all up there on that rod i'll get that off and um oh, cast out see you in a bit Absolutely brilliant. So what have I done? I've come here today fishing. Didn't really feel it much. A lot on my mind. And uh, but I still enjoyed coming here. Still enjoyed setting up actually. And uh, yeah, what have we got? I've caught a flounder and a, and a cod. Another codlin. So that's now five trips on the bounce where I've caught a codlin. So that's a. That's a new personal best for me. Um, last week's video was a personal best. It's the first time I've caught multiple codlin. Um, yeah, 27th of November. What a great night it's been. I've got myself off the sofa, rushed around getting all my batteries charged because I hadn't done it because all week I'd been working. And yeah, put the effort in, come here, I really like it here. I ain't got a clue where it is. I might call it my I don't know where I am fishing. That's great. Um, if that's all I catch tonight, I'm happy. I'm just happy with that because I've had a flounder, I've had a codlin. It's all that matters. GoPro's being good as well. Now, at the beginning when I had to put the, because my GoPro never stores the date, I always have to put it in manually. So I have to put it in and then I switched it off, switched it on and I had to put the date in again. 
So apart from that, it's been fine. So uh, yeah, it's all looking good, isn't it? Saw that bite of that cod, codlin, and uh, I also saw the bite of the flounder. So just happened to look up at the right time, I think. Right, see you in a bit. We'll keep this going. This isn't the end. It's still going. I'm ever so sorry to those out there that don't like it, but you know, you don't have to watch it. Well, why would you watch it this far in? You wouldn't, would you? It's just for those that like watching it. And do you know what? Sometimes I think to myself, I've had enough of this and all this shite with YouTube and stuff and everything that gets you down at times because um, it happens to all YouTubers. Um, I watch Mark Aquatics. He's a, a fish aquarium chap and he took time out of YouTube because he'd had enough. Um, his video's up on his channel, if it's still there. I don't know if he's took it down, but he had a big break and then come on and did an explainer and said that he was hacked off with uh, YouTube politics and everything. And, and it does get you down sometimes, but I was fishing away and pottering about and doing the filming and I actually thought I'm enjoying this filming. So, you know, I do enjoy filming sometimes as much as I do enjoy the fishing. Not as much, but it is part of it for me. I couldn't think about fishing without filming, to be honest. And if I did, I think I'd feel guilty. But I need to watch these rods, all this palaver. Um, reason I ain't feeling that earlier on and stuff is I've got hernia and um, I was picking up a 10 litre tub of paint and putting it up this high onto some steps so I could paint because I'd forgotten me little paint can to put paint in so I can just carry that so I had to get on with the house and um, yeah I know I should have done a risk assessment but you don't do you not for yourself anyhow my stomach ripped the next day I could feel it a torn or something and I've got yeah that then heals until you rip it again but um i've also got something else going on in that same region there when i had a hernia operation before they start sewed me all up in my belly button and there's a stitch left in and they couldn't get it out and uh that's gone a bit red now it's been in there that stitch has been in there for years probably five or six years and it's coming out and today I noticed it and it was red and it's sore. So I've now got cotton wool in there. This doesn't sound good, does it? But I've got cotton wool and Dettol shoved in there with tape over it to hold it in. And um, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. The older I get, the more squeamish I get. I don't want a hip operation because they might not put me out. Um, my knee's fine now, I keep wearing a knee bandage and my knee is okay, I'm not limping with my knee now. And touch wood, my Achilles tendons, they've been quite good as well just lately. I haven't been hobbling along like this with them either. So I've now got this with my belly button where it's it's gone red and inflamed in there. So hopefully the Dettol will, um, if I keep putting Dettol in there, it'll keep, it'll sort itself out until I get to the hospital. But I shan't be going to the hospital tomorrow because I've got to get this hole and landing painted in the stairs. So I'm busy tomorrow. So um, if I do go, it'll be at night time. But if I get moved from one hospital to the other, to the main hospital, I'll be all night. I'll be knackered the next day. So I think I'll leave it two or three days and see what this debt will do and see if it calms it down because nobody's touching it because I think it'll be a bit sensitive and uh, I'm a bit, nobody's touching my belly button because that's, an, that's a no-go area, that's sensitive. I don't know why I've just told you that, apart from it's playing on my mind and if there's something on my mind I have to say it 99.9% um, .9 of the time. But yeah, we'll just have to see what happened with me. Uh, worst case scenario is I go to the hospital and they pull this stitch out and I'll hit the roof and uh, I don't mind going if they numb it. If they numb it, they can pull it out and then hopefully I'll get some antibiotics. But seeing my doctor, got no chance. Too many people in the country, certainly too many people in the in where I live, 
too many people in the doctor's surgery and not enough doctors. But we're not getting into that. Right, well that's what I wanted to tell you anyhow earlier on, but I thought, no, I'm not gonna. Ooh. I think that might be a fish. This is big. This is big. Jesus wet. Another codlin. That was heavy. That was hard work pulling that in, whether the tide was going with it or something, I don't know, but we caught another codlin. I'll get it unhooked, I'll bring you back, we'll measure it to codlin. Right, that is 40 centimetre, 40 centimetres, absolutely fantastic. That can go back, that was quite deeply hooked but I got it out, I'm quite chuffed with myself really for doing that. Unbelievable, absolutely fantastic isn't it, caught another codlin. Right, here we go. One codlin. He's got his gills open. He's certainly uh, full of life. 40 centimetres. Let's get that back. Whoa. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic that was. That's, uh, well, I know where I'm gonna cast next time. It's exactly the same spot. So, uh, I ain't got a bait ready. I'm fishing one rod. Tide is pulling really fast. It's going out now. And that's why it was really heavy pulling that fish in. Um, but AO. I nearly thought I was going to have to get me an ailer. <laughs> right, two codlin, one white, uh, no whiten. Where are they gone? Two codlin and a flounder, so top notch. I'm going to get this rig sorted out right quick. I have got a bait made up. I'll get it put on the rig and uh, get it out. See you in a bit.
Oh, there's some tide run out there now. This is the biggest tide. This is the biggest tide run I've ever seen here. It is yanking. Let's get this pulled in. This is a workout. It's like being at the gym. Right, there's nothing on that. Right, let's get this cleared off. Oh, bollocks. How'd that happen? Bloody straw this is. I shall get that baited up and then what I'll do is I'll bring you back because um, I've got no rigs ready. I'm going to have to chuck right to the left now. That's a shame because uh, the fish are just down to the right of me really. Well, oh, it ain't cold enough for a hat so it's making me head itch. Right, I'll be back in a minute when I've finished. There's a log coming down the bloody river, isn't there? God knows. I don't know. Right. That's both rods out of cast. That literally downstream. Uh, well, down river. So uh, we'll see what happened. The other one has whipped right round. It'll be in the uh, drain now which is the hot point. So hopefully we'll catch another codlin. I've got bait to get ready, so I shall get that baited up and get the rig done. The rig's down on the floor. It's been a bit hectic, and uh, well, it's hectic for me. I'm not in it for catching, catch, 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 catch. I just want to come fishing and enjoy myself. And we've done it again. We've caught two codlin. That's fantastic. Caught the flounder as well. Always good catching flounders. I love catching flounders. And uh, yeah, it's gone. It's either weed or it's a bloody log. So it, ain't, it hasn't touched my lines, hope, thank God. So um, yeah, how many weeks is it now? It was four, weren't it? Three. So this is the fifth week of catching codlin. The fifth video on the, on, on the trot. Yeah, it's five. It's five videos. I'm pretty certain. I'm 99% certain it is five videos on the trot catching codlin. Chuffed to bits. That's a personal best personal best for me. Don't make my tummy feel any better. Every time I bend down, it's like it's someone stabbing you. <sighs> Falling apart. I got my hernia. That stitch in my belly button, which is now inflamed and sore. I've got my hip, I've got knees, Achilles tendon. What else can go wrong? I suppose my cock could fall off, couldn't it? I don't think that would matter either. Right, it's brilliant. I've had uh, caught three fish, I'm chuffed to bits. 
just coming there and uh, there's no wind the, the water is absolutely flat calm it's fantastic I'm chuffed to bits right I need to get myself in order I need to get these this rig baited up and bait another make another bait up ready for the next one um, and then I can sit down and have a coffee so I'll see you in a bit this is the Codlin channel I've caught two caught three in the last one and every other video before that I've had one so it's brilliant I think that's seven is it seven uh, no it was six so it's eight codlin I've had eight codlin this season up to now now last year I think I had one codlin and it was like a fish finger and I caught that with taxi Dave at the river cool back in those hazy days of catching with them unbelievable but this year's a good year and it's because there's codlin all around the country they're catching them down in the south northeast well they're always catching them up there you've got robson on uh, cumbrian sea fishing uk or whatever it is I feel, sorry about that but um it's cumbrian sea fishing i think or something like that go check it out he catches cod over on the Cumbrian coast, i.e. the Lake District on that west coast. So, and go check out Earl's fishing um, adventures because uh, soon, I, I believe soon, you will see his uh, rebuilt M Sport Icon M Sport. He's uh, stripping it down and having a go at doing it himself from scratch, from rubbing the blank down. I hope it all goes well, Earl. By this time this video come out, you'll probably have finished it, I would say. He's set his stall out and he's he's doing it. Um, why he's asking advice from me, I don't know, but I've given him my two penneth and uh, he's, he's doing what other people are telling him as well. So hopefully his rod will turn out and they're a good blank. I'm sure it'll be all good it'll look good and uh, good luck with it I'm gonna get these rigs done now and then once they're done hopefully we'll have another fish keep catching them when it goes over there and I've only got one over there now can't see the rod tip because I'm dazzled by this light so what I'm gonna do is I'm turning this off I'm doing the rigs I'm having a coffee. Right, let's see what's on this. A couple of lads are gone fishing them. The two lads down there that were having a good time, having a good old yarn and chat and natter, they're gone. But um, the tide is dropping now. Goes out ever so quick. And... Um, Seems to go out quicker here than it does at, um, had to change the battery again. I'm certainly getting my money's worth out of the batteries. Never mind, what with the lights and the batteries on the GoPro, when they run out, it'll make my bag lighter to carry back, won't it? Because I won't be carrying all that energy in the batteries, so.
got a grass and straw on it. Bait's not been touched. I would say those two codlin, there was a sh short shawl, shawl, shawl. There was a lot of them coming down the river. And I would say because I like to get them unhooked to make sure they're all right and returned, I probably should have, um, see I put them in the bucket, I should have then just done the rig, cast it out because I could have caught another one. But that's me, always miss the boat. Where's that line? Yeah. I might just cast straight out. Let it wind round. Or shall I cast of a... I'll cast out at an angle. That's what I'll do. Just to the left of this. Bloody hell. Sound like someone fell in the water. It's whizzing round. Never mind, hopefully it'll whiz round. Hopefully it'll whiz round into the shoal of fish. See, I said it right then, didn't I? Shoal. If I cast to the left at an angle, the weight holds in the water. If you cast straight out, it whips round. Um, but I do want it to whip round and hug in right tight because that's a hot spot. Right, I'll get this baited up. We'll probably, probably cast that rig out and that'll be it. The tide is going down, I've got plenty of time, but I've enjoyed myself. I've had two coddling and, and the flounder. Keep repeating myself with that, but I've still still had them. And chuffed to bits, so. What was, I think one was 37 centimetres, one was 40, they aren't huge, but it's a good size cod. It's better than a little tiny thing that I normally catch, but yeah, I've had some good, good coddling just of the last sessions. And it's been it's been relentless, it's been good. But I've not had I've not had that big one. I've not had a 60 centimetre ba uh, cod. There is one on my channel, if you go back a year and a half, something like that, a year and three quarters. Um well it'll be coming up to two years probably. Um you'll see it, I caught one there. Brilliant. And I said at the time that'll probably be a fish of my lifetime, you know, I'll probably not catch one any bigger. But time will tell, there's still a chance, isn't there? Right, that's whipped right round now, so that'll be in the tide, it'll just be pulling on it, and that'll settle down. Hopefully we'll get a fish. And that's squid and cart, so I'll do another one, I might do squid and cart again, so... Squid and prawn, we'll see. See you in a bit. Right, some was on this, but I've had to turn all the lights on and everything, so I might have missed the bite. Yeah. It's heavy. Uh. Might have to go down because the water's so low. Might have just been the weight being pulled out. I'll be back in a minute.
tangled up to anything. Look at that. There's either the tide or that was a fish. That was knocking. I had to turn the camera and everything on though. But there, that's what happens. That can go out again, that. Balls. Boulder dash. Bollocks. Was it a cod? Right, I'm casting over that way. I'm casting over that way. Let's get this camera set up over it. That's a good way. So now I've exp So now I've explained about my hernia and stuff because it's sore and I've got the other issue as well with my stitch that shouldn't be there. Thank you, NHS. Um that's why I'm not casting off the ground because sometimes I feel it in my stomach when I uh, do it because I'm probably putting too much graunch into it. So uh, yeah, other red chucks here. That's why I've come fishing here again because it's easy. I ain't got to chuck it out far. Um, I ain't got to climb over a wall. I ain't got to climb up st a step up and down some steps. I can just walk straight off the edge and down the side. So yeah, hopefully these lines won't get tangled up now. All in all, yeah it's been a good session i've enjoyed myself it's what a night i mean it is there's no wind the river's like glass it's that flat you've got hull and paul over there it's hessel over there it's, it's great it's all lit up um you don't get no hassle it's brilliant very long walk though you have you have got a long long walk because obviously where you have to park your van so I wouldn't bother coming there if I was you, it's terrible. It's just tonight is a nice night because of the weather. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. I've got the bait still there. I've got the two rods out. I'll bring in the right hand rod shortly. And I've got another bait to cast out. So I'll see you in a bit. Right, we're going to see what's on this right one. I don't think there's anything on it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, the lines are snaggled. Right, I don't think there's anything on it. Thought it had a bite on then, didn't I? Right, let's put that rig to bed. Get the last one chucked out. I 
I can hear an owl over there. Right. <laughs> Thought I had a bite on then. It was me line on me other line. Where do I cast it? Where do we cast it? I'm gonna cast it over there. Probably a mistake. I probably should cast it in me spot. We'll try. That's good. That's good. Well, there you go. It's uh, gonna have to keep an eye on that because I think it might cross lines, might cross. Um, I think the chap the last chap down there fishing i think he's gone he's now packing up so i am the last one here yet again yeah it's crossed over so hopefully boy is that crossed over i'm gonna have to swap these rods round. <laughs> nearly went then i'm gonna have to swap these rods around i think Yeah, no, I'll leave it where it is. I'll just take it off and go that side. But the line swung right round because I didn't cast over there. If I had cast it over there, it held bottom. Right, let's swap it round. That's better. Right, so we've got a full squid on that. I'm over here. We've got a full squid on that. Well, it's been a good night anyhow. So I'm chuffed a bit. Yeah, it's been a nice session. I've enjoyed it. Um, it's my uh, tool there. I'll put it on there. I normally have a good scat around, so I wouldn't lose anything. I've got my uh, cart bag, bait bag down there, and the line that I picked up off that sea defence. So it don't get around them bird's feet. That's been far. I mean, you, you can't end the wind, can you? It's absolutely... I, I started this video off and I didn't know what to say. It, I just weren't... I guess I weren't feeling it. And uh, now, totally, totally different. It's totally refreshed me and uh, I feel great. Um, even though I've got a pain in my tummy, yeah, it'll just have to sort itself out or I'll have to go and get it sorted, won't I? And I'll just have to grin and bear the pain like those bloody soldiers in the Napoleonic Wars because I'm sure they won't numb it when they do anything to it. I expect I'll be there on the roof. Right, let's hope we catch on these last two. Um, even if I catch just one more fish, it'll be brilliant. If not, it's been a great night anyhow. I've really enjoyed myself. And, ooh, where will I fish next time? I've not got a clue. Probably end up back here again. I ain't bothered where I go, as long as I enjoy it. Because it's about that, that's what it is for me. You know, it's my fishing, it's my fishing trip, it's my session. And I, I need to enjoy it. So that I, uh, so that when you leave here and go home, you're in a different frame of mind, aren't you? 
hopefully better. So, yeah. Anyhow, I'll see you in a bit. I could leave this out another five minutes. Um, there don't seem to be anything happening to it. I could leave it out another five minutes and reel it in, but I might reel this in. I don't think there's anything on it. Pack it away and just, and just concentrate on the last on the last um, rod, which is full squid. Must have some weed on this, I reckon. Yeah, bait ain't been touched. Bait's not been touched. It's worked, wound up again, but that's probably the tide. There's a huge tide run today. Still, never mind. It's a bit bright, isn't it? So, we've got one rod out. It's in my favourite spot and it's got a full squid on it, so we'll see what see what happened. This was squid and carp. I've started watching Walking Dead again because um, the daughter's got Disney Channel and all the Walking Dead are on the Disney Channel now. So uh, we watch so much of it on Prime that you could watch for free, and. Um, we never watched the last few ep series, so um, we're watching it again, but we're starting from the beginning, and uh, we watch five or six a night. <laughs> it's uh, binge watching, but that's the only thing I'm probably missing, is the fact that I ain't watching any Walking Dead tonight, and I'd love it if the wife was still awake when I got them, but I know she won't be. She does like her sleep. Right, I'll get this put away and then uh, I'll bring you back to reel in that last one before it gets too low. Dodgy. Let's reel this in. I've got probably another half an hour to fish, but there's nothing happening. It's just gone totally quiet. So let's see what's on this. I don't think there's anything on it whatsoever.
Well, well, the bait, hang on, the bait was still on. Let's see, make sure it's filming. I don't do all this. The bait was still on, so uh, at least I was still fishing. But it has gone quiet. Everyone has left now. I was wrong before. Some people come right round the corner and uh, they've gone. So uh, I am the last one here. I'm going to pack up now. That's it. Um, it's been a nice session. I've enjoyed it. It's freed my mind into a better place. And as you can tell, I'm uh, actually talking all right now. Whereas before, I couldn't be asked to talk. I didn't know what to say. And it's just weird when your mind is full of crap, isn't it? And uh, worry about your bloody um, body. <laughs> you know, things that are going wrong. Oh, Jesus. Things that are going wrong. So, uh, but yeah, I've enjoyed myself here today. It's been nice. It's been... Um, it's cracking weather. Unbelievable. I love it when it's like this. There's no wind, flat calm. It's not too cold. As long as you're wearing the right clue and I'm not cold enough. I've, I've got two hand warmers as well. Plus, I've actually bought some um, heated gloves. They look like 1970s gloves. They're like what your old man used to wear. But they've got cables onto a battery pack. And they, they only last for an hour. So I've bought a bigger battery pack. But I've only bought them for during winter so that if my hands are cold and the hand warmers aren't keeping up with it, I can slip them on, warm my fingers up, and then I'm all right. Because once your hands get cold, they don't warm up, do they? So that's why I've got the hand warmers and now I've got some heated gloves. So they don't weigh a lot. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, this has been fishing the River Humber. It's been like I say absolutely fantastic so it's now the fifth session on the trot catching cod I'm chuffed with that um, don't forget I'm sorry about this Danny I've done it again ain't I? go check out Danny Shaw fishing he, he's my old mate I've been talking to him tonight about meeting up and uh, I've just got to get a couple of things done in my house he'll say oh, it don't matter I'll sleep in the van but it's bloody winter you know it, it does get cold I can make him a hot water bottle though couldn't I could make Danny a hot water bottle in a flask so keep them going I have to give him a back door key as well so he can use the loo if he'll let my cats in and out then money anyhow go check out Danny's good channel why am I looking at the rod I've just reeled it in anyhow yeah go check out Danny shore fishing anyhow back on to me this is the what I'm talking about what am I talking about now just rabbling on a load of crap aren't I Anyhow, this has been fishing at the River Umber. Um, I will find out exactly where I am fishing. I don't really know yet, but it is on the south bank. And, uh, yeah, it's all lit up over there, so make your mind up. Anyhow, it's my secret spot. Anyhow, two coddling and flounder. I've enjoyed myself. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you to all my members, and thank you to all my subscribers. We are now at 3,940 subscribers as of the 27th of November. I've put that in for myself. Tom hopefully will leave that in, but I've put that in for myself because I never keep a record of where I am. So I look back at my subscriber and I think, Christ, that's took a long while, and sometimes it don't, but... You know, it takes me longer than others. That's the only problem. But, yeah, that's good, isn't it? 3,940. It's not bad for a Norfolk lad that rabbles on. And and uh, there's an organic channel, let's just say that. So, thank you for watching this. I hope you like the fish that I brought and show you. It, the, the codlin carries on, doesn't it? Catching codlin carries on. I'm going to have to think up some good titles, aren't I? I hope you have a happy new year. I hope you've had a good Christmas, like I said earlier. Make sure you have a good new year. Drink if you can. If you can't drink, um, eat a lot. I don't know. Just try enjoy yourselves. Have a good new year. And uh, I hope everything goes well for you in 2023. Um, and it's prosperous and everything else that goes with it. So this has been fishing at the River Humber at me. Uh, I don't know where I'm fishing secret spot and I'll see you and on. Bye.
I suppose my cock could fall off, couldn't it?